I'm gonna read this book. My mom got me this a few weeks, maybe. Um, I'm gonna read it. I think it's eating cupcakes right now. Great. Now let's read. I'm gonna skip the introduction. Chapter one is about the Milky Way. The Milky Way. That's the Milky Way. There, yeah, that's the Milky Way in the picture. Hi, I'm eating cupcakes. Chapter one: The Milky Way. The Milky Way is a band of stars of our own galaxy, beaming radiantly across the night sky. I know, Ling. Everybody will see you right there, Ling. I know you're. Let's just say you get cupcakes because I eat it some. Right. My mom got uh, that cupcake looking Fun. thing. That's frosting on it. Yeah, yeah, you're frosting. Yeah. Right. Well, then my mom got this from her RBC bank. Just bank would be fine, Ling. No one will know what that is. You said it's from RBC. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um. Let's read. There are at least there are at least one hundred billion stars in our galaxy, and because what we are out in the su in, in its suburb, we we have the good fortune to see a uh, being able to see the shape of the Milky Way in uh, in our night sky. This is the picture. They send us. That's the Milky Way picture they send us. They put in this book, right there. We're about two thirds of our way out from the center of the Milky Way, and so when we gaze in the, that direction at night, we see this beguiling band of stars in our line of sight. Oh, this book is called Fifty Things to See in the Sky. It's a great book. I probably recommend you to buy a uh, buy it or borrow it. It's a really good book. Borrow it from the library. It's more better than buying it. I bought it because when you buy it, you waste money. Waste some money. Let's ring. I know it's you, Link. Stop trying to prank me. I trick me from the videos. No, somebody, everyone saw you. Okay. I'm Just don't not. put your hands. Don't do that. Okay. I'm I'm reading. Oh, guys, I'm turning six soon in December. December. I'm turning eleven. And I'm turning six. Okay, let's read. Okay. okay. So I'm going to be in grade one soon. Right. Let's just read. Oh, Ling has cupcake on her face. Okay, just I'm gonna read. Don't be mad of that. I'm not mad, Ling. We are about two thirds of the way. Oh wait, where was I? Oh, I guess yeah. everyone's laughing because I'm not laughing. And no, I'm reading. No, Dang, I'm I'm making a video. Everybody can see. Okay. Everybody, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody, everybody's not laughing at you. We're recording, so let's just read. Okay, I'm gonna read. Okay, don't don't distract me, please, Link. Uh, band of stars in our line of sight. <laughs> line of sight. The Egyptians call it the Heavenly Nile, and thought it was extension of their great river into the sky. It in Norn erupted. It was called the Pathway of the Birds, as it believed that migratory birds used a milky. Yes. Yeah, I'm making a video. Come, come, come. Oh, yeah. Great. I'm making a video, mommy. Or wreck. I'm wreck. I'm wreck. We need recording. Wreck means recording. All right. <laughs> so. As it was believed that migratory birds used the Milky Way to guide them, you can tell where it, it it is using a constellation based on one bird in particular, Cenus or the Swan. In autumn, in the northern hemisphere, go somewhere super dark. The darker it is, 
the more of the Milky Way you'll be able to see. Choose a moonless night that is free of clouds and try to get as far away from city lights as you can. So those are the three things you should do to see a Milky Way. Go away from city lights. Go, um, and, oh. It has to have no moon and no clouds. No city lights either. So those are the three things you should do to see a Milky Way. Look for the constellation Cenus, the swan. This is a beautifully symmetrical constellation. With the wonderfully bright star, Deneb, in the tail of the swan, and the star Satyr in the middle, with the two wings leading off, lean, leading off the sides. Oh yeah, this book tells about some constellations and how you see them and where's the best time to see them, actually. So there's the Cenus swan, the Cenus swan, and then that's the den of, the den of is the tail, it's, right. Cenus is, a, is flying along the Milky Way. When you look at Cenus, you're looking directly into the Milky Way in the gentle glow of billions of stars. That's Cenus flying into the Milky Way. When you look at this constellation, you're looking at the Milky Way. And it's flying through the stars. Woo! Oh. Lang, Lang, stop it, Lang. Oh. <sighs> alright, alright. Okay, um... I'm gonna read chapter 2, too, okay? Two. Chapter uh, all right, Star Cross Lover Chapter Two. Two bright stars in the night sky, Altar and Vega, tell a story that has been recounted for Myonia, an ancient Chinese legend. A humble cowherd, Altar, fell deeply in love with the princess Vega. Sa Vega. Sadly, their love was forbidden, and they were forced to live on the opposite sides of the Great River, the Milky Way. See, so, so, um, right there, right, right there, right there is Altar, and right over there, right over there is, um, Princess Vega. They were been, they've been separated from the Milky Way, so they're separated from this, from this. This is the Milky Way, so it was separated, and the billion stars. So they forbidden and they were out and they were separated. So they were across. They're both in the opposite sides of the river. The, the lovers were only the lovers. The lover were only able to meet once a year on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month, when a flock of magpies would form a bridge across the river. One on this day every year, the legend is marked by Kui Festival in China, Tanabata, the Star Festival in Japan. At about 17 light years from Earth, Altar is one of the closest stars you can see with your naked eye. With the naked eye, Vega is about 26 light years away, but since it is much bigger than hotter than and hotter than Vega, uh, Altar, Vega outshines it. In fact, Vega is one of the brightest stars in, 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 the, in the sky. So that's Vega right there. It, they said that it is the brightest star in the brightest um, star in the sky. In the sky. Right there. That's Vega. And right there is Ve Altar. They were like separated from the Milky Way. Too bad. They're forbidden. Their love was forbidden. No matter where or when you view these stars, they will always be on either side of the Milky Way. Find Cenus using a. S oh yeah. Oh, on this book, you can find the Cenus on page twenty-five. All right. Look for Deneb, the brightest star in the in the Cenus constellation. Then look for two other bright stars that form a triangle with Deneb. This constellation is called the Summer Tri- uh, the Summer Triangle. Mm -hmm. These two 
stars are Vega and Altar, the star cross lovers. If, if conditions allow you to see the Milky Way, you'll notice that it runs between these two si uh, stars, keeping them on opposite sides. Alright, so I'll, I read chapter 1, and I think I read chapter 2, too. Yeah, chapter 2. So, I'm gonna... This video's pretty short, actually. You know what? I'm gonna make it pretty long. I'm gonna make... You know, it's pretty short. Because I read chapter 1 and chapter 2, and they're pretty short. You know what? I'm gonna read chapter 3, too. So, the, the North... Oh, yeah, Link is playing Tile Hop. Link's playing Tile Hop. Tile Hop. That's a game. No, I'm playing. It's a the game North? That you have to. Okay, I know. You can explain it in your video. This is a book video, okay, I'm Link? Fine. Alright. The North for now, Star, and How to Find It. Faithfully guiding travelers for centuries. Polaris, the North Star, or the Pole Star? Might be the most famous star in the northern hemisphere, but it's not the brightest. So this star right there, which is a picture they sent and they put in this book, is the brightest star. It's the brightest. Uh, it's not the brightest star. I mean, it's the it's the most famous star in our galaxy, in our sky. If you, Robot. oh yeah, um, you can find Cyrus, Cyrus, Robot. in this book on page 46. Oh. So Cyrus, in page 46 of this book, it's about the dog star. There's Cyrus, the dog, the dog star, chapter 11. But this, today I'm going to read chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3, okay? Because it's too, because sh it's very short. <laughs> Um, if you can find Polaris, you can find North. This is because it lies in the in direct, oh no, in a direct line above the North Solar Celia Pole. This this is great, but not only for Celia navigation, but also for taking long but. I expose your photographs. Oh yeah, Ling uh Ling is sad. Ling is sad she lost on her game. She's watch she's playing a game and watching ads. Great. That's right. This is great, but not only for oh, where was I? But also for taking long exposure photographs. Polar is creating a seeming fixed point in a Star Labs picture, around in which all other star appear to rotate. Well, look for the constellation Yuza Major. Specifically, the region known as the Big Dipper or the Plot or the Ploth. This constellation is made of seven stars and and kind of looks like a saucepan. Right there is the that's Yuza Major. The Big Dipper or the Plot. Also known as the Big Dipper or the Plot. So that right there looks like a saucepan. Yeah. Kinda looks like it, right? Kinda looks like it. <laughs> Look at the handle of the saucepan. Follow an imaginary line from the end of the handle towards the pan. Down the side, then along the bottom of the pan. I didn't expect. No. Oh, good thing I cleaned it. Then oh, no. locate the far side of the saucepan. The two stars that makes up the sides of the pan are known as the pointer star. Right there. Right there is the pointer star as it's circled. Is it? Right there. Of the Big Dipper. Draw a line up the side of the saucepan. Through, through, the, through both of the pointer star and keep going into the straight line. In a straight line. The next bright star you hit is the North Star. So right there. Right, right there I mean. So you draw a line from the Big Dipper, and you um, and you trace it right there. Trace it up. Come on, Lane. Sorry, I have to turn off your volume a little. Um, I didn't see that. 
So, um, also, oh yeah, so if you keep going from the beginning, like you made a straight line right there, right there, and you made a straight line. That right there is the, um, uh, the North Star, the North Star. So if you trace a line from here, which is the point of stars, and you, if you, um, uh, move up forward, you will hit the big, you will hit the North Star. That's the North Star right there, okay? Alright, so this is gonna be the end of this video. I know it's pretty short, right? <laughs> I know I about, think uh, it's pretty big. I'll tell you about one thing. There's lots of stars in our galaxy, and there's lots of... Uh, oh, yeah, there's lots of um, constellations. There's the Leo, the Lion constellation. And the Big Dipper, which apparently it's also as it's as all in the book, it's the Yuza Major, and there's also the uh, the Dog Star, Cyrus. Apparently, it's on chapter eleven, which I'm not gonna read you right now, cause um, cause I'll make that when I get to chapter six, uh, chapter eleven. I'll read the Dog Star. There's also, um, the solar eclipse, and it also tells about the sun dogs, and, uh, and also tells about, yeah, lots of moon, it tells about, um, lots of stuff, about suns and stars, and including constellations. Leo's probably my favorite constellation. Um, I don't know what's my favorite constellation, actually. There's many constellations. Um, constellation is a band of, it's like a stars that connect each other. To make, um, like, kind of a kind of point that connects. And when it connects, it, like, makes some kind of a picture. It, like, makes some kind of picture. Like, the Big Dipper, it looks like a saucepan. And Leo looks like a lion. Uh, Orion is also the is also a, a constellation. It's a hunter. Orion's the hunter. And if you want to know about Orion, then it's on page um on page forty two of this book. So I recommend you to borrow this book and start reading it for yourself because. It tells lots about stars and about the galaxies, stars, um, constellations, and it's pretty much a good book. It's really a good book. I'm on chapter, like, chapter four, uh, chapter 17, I think. Chapter 17? Chapter 14. I'm in chapter 14 of this book. It's a really good book. It tells about the, all, all, it tells about the constellations. It also tells about the stars, and including the Milky Way. Including, including the Milky Way. So, goodbye everyone, and I'll see you in my next video.